So thank you for, uh, for asking that question. Um, let me get my browser up. Sorry, some of this. It's on, getting to my windows, okay. I have a lot of windows on my screen. I need one of those things where you have like multiple screens at the same time. Um, so I'm going to bring up an image right now. I'm gonna put it up on screen also. Uh, Okay, through a Google search, we're able to look at this on the right. Hmm, doesn't look like it's coming through. Do you see a web page on the thumbs up if you see a web page? Web page? No. How does that? Hold on. New I share. Stop sharing this screen and then start sharing the web screen. There you go. I think it's. I think we're getting close. Here we go. So you can see on the on the right hand side here. Um, how Babylonian numbers looked. They had clay tablet and they would have this little, like a stylus, it was called a stylus, and it would make a little triangular shaped wedge in the clay. And if they put one little mark, that represented the number one, and two marks next to each other represented the number two and three marks. So almost like tally marks. And then they started making these sort of like pyramids out of them. So four, they made like a sort of triangle thing and five also like triangle and six, this sort of rectangle and seven and eight and nine, you see this sort of nine, like a tic-tac-toe board. Um, but for 10, they used a single wedge, but it was like diagonal. And 11, they put a diagonal wedge and an upright wedge. So you might be looking at that and thinking, well, that's like base 10, isn't it? So like 56 over here, there's five diagonal wedges and six upright wedges. So it seems just like a base 10 system. And it does have a little bit of that going on, certainly when you get from the numbers one to 59. But let's see what happens after 59. So if, if, if 59 is represented by sort of these five diagonal wedges and nine upright wedges, the number 60 is represented again by an upright wedge. This number 60 and the number one were represented by the same symbol which could be pretty confusing. The way that we, um, the way that we'll represent it, we're not gonna be using these actual symbols, although there's a homework question that asks you to like, you know, interpret them. We're gonna write our numbers with two digits, zero, 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 one, zero, two, up to 59. And then for 60, we're gonna write it this way, 0100 because our, um, the Babylonians had a base 60 system where the ones place is the ones and the second place, the place that's like the tens place in our base 10 system is the 60s. So the number 60 is 0100. And we make each of our digits actually have two digits because for 60, we don't want to start using letters, A, B, C, D. We're going to run out of letters. So we each digit, each position uh, is going to be a two digit number that's going to be from zero, zero up to 59. Now, the Babylonians didn't have a placeholder zero. And that's why for them, the number one looked like an upright wedge and the number 60 looked like an upright wedge. It's pretty confusing. If someone says, how much money do you owe me? And you give that symbol, well, they don't know whether it's $1 or $6. But if they say, how old is my grandmother, your grandmother, and, and you use this symbol, people would be able to infer that their grandmother was 60 years old and not 
60 years old. Oh, you will have access to the recordings, but I have to, um, I have to grant, I have to give you a link to it, which I will. So, um, the Babylonians, you might see something like this, like, Okay, we look at this thing, and this is like a two, which I'll write as O2, and this thing's like an 11, like that. So this represents, the two is in the 60s place, so this represents 100, and, this represents two times 60, plus one times 11, which is 120 plus 11, which is 130. So the Babylonians have a base 60 system. And it may seem strange, except when we look at 0159, which is the number 119, because it's 1 times 60 plus 59 times 1. The next number is 120, 0, 02, 0, 0. And it's because the Babylonians had a base 60 system that even today, almost 4,000 years, we still, with our time, make 60 minutes in an hour and 60, uh, 60 seconds in a minute. There was a time in the 1800s where they experimented with changing that and making the second a little bit shorter and having 100 seconds in a minute and 100 minutes in an hour, like make it agree with the metric system. But it didn't catch on. People were already comfortable with the Babylonian base 60 uh, number system. And yes, the minutes and the seconds for angles uh the minutes and seconds um are using astronomy still with angles and time of course has to do with uh, or time goes on whether the earth rotates or not but time and the planets moving were very linked together so they're like related to each other 60 minutes and 60 seconds for angles and it all comes from the Babylonians. So um, if I wanted to write the number 43 in base 60, I would just write 43. But if I wrote 0403, that's not 43 anymore. So I want to take a minute to type in what the 0403 base 60 number is what number in base 10. Okay, great. I see a lot of 243s. Now, I personally like to use this convention where I put um, these, each digit itself is a two digit number from zero to 59. But some textbooks instead put a comma in between the places. So they might say four comma three to be the 243. I find it confusing because the 43 on its own doesn't have a comma. So you will always see me use the convention of uh, pairs of digits, which have like a little space, um, a little space between them. Now, what about a, a bigger number that has three places in them? So. Now, you might look at this and say, well, is it a six digit number? I'm calling this a three digit base 60 number. Instantly, this would look like this one, two, three, four, and then the 10, and then for seven. That's what it would look like for them, but we're going to just write it this way. I'm never going to be using the 
this cuneiform or I don't even know exactly how to pronounce it. What do you guys think the third, and it's called, by the way, this system, base 60, is called not decimal, but sexagesimal. That's base 60. And yes, I see this place here is the 3,600s. So it's quite a big, uh, you get pretty large numbers uh, pretty, pretty quickly. I don't think it's 4,207 because this four on its own is four times 3,600. Okay, good. And I see some 15,007s, and that's right. Four times 3,600 plus 10 times 60 plus seven. I don't know why I wrote 07. I'll write one times seven. So you'll know when it's base 60 if you see those groups of, of uh, two digits. Now, going in the opposite, so turning from base 60 to base 10, that one's pretty easy because it's a bunch of multiplication and adding. Oh, and I just want to make one more note about the lack of a zero. That, that, that is, the zero wasn't like, quote, invented until much later. The Babylonians have this base 60 system with no zero as a placeholder. And then we don't see a base system again in any other culture for like another, uh, like over 2000 years when it pops up again. It's a great idea to have a base system. They didn't have the zero, but they still with, were able to, to do their, their math without the, uh, the placeholder, but it, it, it did cause, it would cause some confusion. Now going in the other direction, like 220 in base 10, well, we can just do the same trick as yesterday. I'll put a 10 there, it's implied that it's base 10. Well, I'm not going to need any of these 3600s. So what I like to do is divide by the biggest place. And I see it goes in three, remainder 40. And that's why I write 03. So 03 space 40 is 220 in base 60. And just to give you one, I'll do it on the same screen so you can still have this one on the screen. Uh, why don't you do 8,150? Take a minute. That's base 10. And you decide how many digits do you need in base 60?
And yes, I see the answer of 02, 15, 50 is the answer. A uh, little space in between. But definitely make each digit a two digit number so there's just no ambiguity for, for us. I like this method, divide by 3600, see what it is, and then take the remainder, divide that by the next place, which is the 60s place. And when once you do the 60s place, the remainder is going to be the, uh, it's going to be the, the ones place. Uh, well, you don't, you, you, uh, if this O2 was bigger than nine, but less than 60, we wouldn't have a zero there. So if just for whatever reason, the number was much larger and it wasn't going in twice, but it was going in, you know, 13 times, then you wouldn't have a zero in front of the two. But in this case, we, we do. And the, we've already done three skills today. The skill of being able to recognize the Babylonian numbers, like with the wedges, the skill of converting from base 60 to base 10, and the skill of going from base 10 to base 60. I'm gonna show you the, um, I have a document that's part of the, the homework tonight. Also that Delta math tests your skills Let's just see if this pops up properly. No, not yet. Hold on, new share. Huh. Okay, okay. So can you uh, thumbs up if you can see the document on your screen now? Okay, great, thank you. So for homework tonight, just to glance through it, say I have a question about taking a number in base, uh, a Babylonian, cuneiform thing and saying what number it is. Then there's converting from base 60 to base 10. And here, this thing's pretty cool looking. This is actually an excerpt. Oh, and someone with a chat, let's see. Uh, 15, I'll get back to that in a sec. This is eight base 60 numbers from uh, the most famous mathematical artifact uh, the most famous Babylonian mathematical artifact there is, which is called Plimpton 322. We're gonna learn about what that is in a couple of days. But here are numbers from it. So this is eight, eight numbers. You notice how they have, see this, oh, oh hold on a second. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Notice um, the, um, in this, well, this here that I'm circling is a single number and it has a, it's a two digit number. Here I see like, this is 59, you see one, two, three, four, five, and there's nine here. But this like real long skinny thing, that's actually the one. They, sometimes they don't use the exact same wedge. They have like a second stylus that's like longer and skinnier. So this one here, this number here is 0159. This is, the, this is the 01 for the 60s place. And this thing here is the 59 for the ones place. So, so this thing here is 0159, which is 119. So, they, so that's like a long skinny one. So it is different looking than the one that they would have used, but that's not always the case. A lot of times they use the exact same, if, if the scribe happens to have like a stylus with long skinny ones on it, they're able to actually distinguish between the 60s place and the units place. Here you see there's gonna be converting from base 10 to base 60 and converting from base 60. Uh, oh, there's actually, yeah, that converting from base 60 to base 10 and 10 to base 60. Let me go back to the iPad. Hold on, before you go back, before you go back, can you yes. explain to me how is that um, eight numbers? Just oh, it's, show the eight numbers. I'm actually seeing like 10 numbers. Yes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, it is 10 numbers. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. So let me change this to, um, there are five rows. Thank you. It was actually uh, 10 numbers from the famous 
plimped in 322. These numbers are really important numbers, but for now, it's just going to be uh, interpreting them uh, and turning them into base 10 also. So you, for this one, you'll say 0159, and then you'll say 119, and you'll do it for the other nine numbers. Thank you. That is 10 numbers, not, uh, not eight. Okay, let me go back to the iPad now. Someone had a question about the 15 in the middle. This 15 came from the fact that after I, see 8150 is bigger than 3600. Once you take away 3600 twice, which is like taking away 7200, there's still 950 left. So this O2 represents the 7200. But now I have to take the remainder, the 950, and break that up into as many 60s as I can. So because 60 goes into 950 15 times, which is 900, that's where that 15 came from. Uh, Amber's asking me about uh, whether you're penalized. No, it's, um, the, it's more that you try to do it because this one's pretty hard. It's a hard to read. You know, they actually made like a copy of the actual tablet and what it looked like. Um, to me, the most important thing are those Delta math modules, because those are like unrelenting. You, you must know what you're doing to get those questions right. So if throughout the term, you're able to do all the Delta math modules, which is, if you think about it, it's basically like a quiz you're taking, even though it's okay if you it takes you a bunch of chances to get one right. But eventually you get five questions right of each type. And to me, that's how I know and, uh, that you've learned the material at the end of the semester, depending on how I can, uh, I'm leaning towards like a Delta math, you know, like final exam where you would get multiple times to, uh, to, to get the answers right. So uh, it's okay if you make a mistake in the translating the Babylonian stuff. Okay, now some more skills because the Babylonians also have decimals. And what's particularly um, confusing about this, actually, let me use 730. They usually use a um, semicolon instead of a decimal point to indicate that we're, we're not dealing with an integer anymore. So in Babylonian times, this place 07 that's the 60th place. And 30. Come on, I got it for you. Come on. Is, uh, is the three, one thirty six hundredths, you know, and that's, that's a very small decimal place, you know, one over 3,600, you think about it. But that's what it is. And since the Babylonians themselves did not write this semicolon there. It was even more confusing because if it was 0730, just that number, that number is seven times 60, that number is 450, if there was no semicolon thing. But with the semicolon, it turned into seven over 60 plus 30 over 3,600. Now what I like to do here is reduce the fractions as much as I can. Uh, one over, got myself confused there, one over 120. And then common denominators. So this semicolon 730 thing is their way of representing, because they don't have fractions. All they have are these base 60 decimals. That's the way they write 1 eighth. Now in base 60, it's really nice because you could do that for a half. 
you could do that, 15 sixtieths for one fourth. You could do six sixtieths for one tenth. You could even say 20 sixtieths for one third. So that's nice. And you could even say like 12 sixtieths is one fifth. And 10 sixtieths is one sixth. So you see, we get a lot of, uh, we don't have to de deal with repeating decimals in base 60 as much. But we've also seen that 0730 was an eighth. And it might seem really confusing, but you know, in time, if a fourth of an hour is 15 minutes, then an eighth of an hour is half of 15 minutes, which is seven and a half minutes. In other words, seven minutes, 30 seconds. But I do want to go over it. It's going to be the same process as, as, as last time. I want to show you how to calculate out what one ninth is as a base 60. We can do it just like yesterday. One ninth equals X over 60. It's not going to be just one digit. Nine X equals 60. X is equal to six and six ninths, which is six and two thirds. So the six becomes the, in the 60s place. And then to get the 3600s place, you say two thirds equals Y still over 60. And Y becomes 40. And that's why one ninth in base 60 is semicolon 0640. And if you take six minutes and 40 seconds and multiply it by nine, the six minutes would turn to 54 minutes. 40 minutes times nine is 360 minutes, which is the other six minutes to make an hour. Now, the reason why it's, it's really important for the Babylonians not to have repeating decimals. That's why the base 10 system wouldn't work well for them. They wouldn't be able to do one third. They wouldn't be able to do one sixth. They wouldn't be able to do one ninth. And the reason why that's so important that they have no repeating decimals is because they don't really have division. When they divide, like, let's say, you know, 50 divided by eight, they would actually instead do 50 times one eighth, which is 50 times one eighth we've seen is 0730. We're actually not gonna do multiple, we're not gonna do standard multiplication. I'm gonna show you how to do some multiplication in a second with some charts but I just wanted to mention just historically that they didn't have division. They divided by multiplying by the reciprocal. And if their reciprocals were not terminating, that would be a big problem. That's why in Babylonian math, you don't see a lot of divide by seven because one seventh does not become a nice decimal in any base except for seven itself or something that's a multiple of seven. Okay. The next thing I wanna show you is how to multiply, uh, how, the, how the, the Babylonian algorithm for multiplication
hey there, I'm back. You might occasionally hear a child screaming at another child in the, in the background. And uh, I might push mute when that happens. So, um, yes, um, wait, few numbers, relative, yes, 60 is divisible by two, three, and five, and that's why decimals terminate if, they, if the denominators only have two, three, and five. Okay, I'm back. Now, to do 23 times 57, there are two ways that I'm gonna teach you to, to do that in the Babylonian times. You see, when you have a base 60 system, your times tables would have 3,600 elements in it. So you're not gonna be memorizing the times tables. So instead, there were there are two ways to do this. Let me go uh, back to that that website for you and show you. This is in the document which you can you can bring up. I put I'm trying to put everything. It's like one document each day, so you can kind of have it open, print it out. Okay, this you see this uh, chart on the top here. It says 23 times table in base 60. So what they would have here is 23 times one is 23, 23 times two is 46. Well, 23 times three is 69, but in base 60, it's 0109. And 23 times four uh, is 92 and it's written. So they would have, but look, it only goes up to 10 and then it jumps to 20, 30, 40, 50. So we can utilize this back to the iPad, we can utilize that chart. It's just got 10, 11, 12, 13, it's got 14 things on it. If I'm so lucky to, to be multiplying by, by 23 times 57, they would know I could do 23 times 50, which is on the chart, plus 23 times seven, which is on the chart. Now, according to the chart, 23 times 50 is 1910, and 23 uh, times 7 is 0241. Then you add those two things together, and you get 5121. And that's the answer. That's in base 60. What is it in base 10? You know, you could check your answer. You could get a calculator going and say 23 times 57 is 1,311. Then you could check uh, that 21 times 60 plus 51 is also 1,311. If you wanted to like check that you got the answer right. Well, that's great if you have a 23 times table, but if they ask for some other number, you're in trouble because you would need 59 of these tables. And not everybody did math back then. You know, there'd be people whose job it was to be the math doers. So they would have the 59 tables if they needed to do these multiplications. So this is great if you have to multiply by 23, but not so good if you have to multiply by some other number. Uh, why don't you take a minute now and 
try to multiply 23 times 20 times uh, 24 with your 23 times tables that's reference sheet. So you could bring up that document in, a, in your browser and use it. Okay, someone asked about part three and four. Uh, for part three, you would just put the 60th place over 60 and the 3600th place over 3600 and add together those two fractions. That's, that's true for part three. So you like for six, you do seven over 60 plus 12 over 3600, get a common denominator. Nina lost on the on, on the on the part three from the from what I'm, I'm talking about the the last topic the one where we're turning the decimals in, into fractions or are you talking about the new thing the people who are saying they're confused are you confused about the multiplying 23 times 24 or about the converting uh, the base 60 decimals into fractions Okay, so why don't I quickly do another one of one of these, like 06, remember 0640? I claim that was one ninth, but if I didn't know that, I would say if that's six over six, six over 60, because this is the 60s place, plus 40 over 3,600. So basically, those are the two denominators, 60 and 3,600, and the numerators come from these two numbers. But when you take the six over 60 and like reduce it, and while you're at it, reduce this to um, one over 90. And when you add them together, equals one ninth. So you can get to this point real easily. Like literally those are the two numerators and the two denominators are just 60 and 3,600. But then, yes, you have to do some, like, to make it even simpler. I wouldn't want to leave it. It's just 6 over 60 plus 40 over 3,600. I'd want to know, you know, what is that number? And that's where the one ninth came from. Now, something interesting happens here. When you do the 23, uh, the 23 times table, that was in the document. So if you, if, if you go over to the, like, tonight's homework, there's, like, this... Um, I'll bring it up for you. Looks like this. Looks like this one. That thing on top is uh, 23. The end is what I'm multiplying 23 by. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8, 9, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We don't need anything more than that because we only need to be able to multiply up to 59, even for complicated ones that we don't that we're, that we're not going to do in this course now let me pull two values from there to do 23 times 24 I have to look up 23 times 20 so 23 times 20 well that's 460 but according to the the table the way they write 460 is 0740 which is 460 and 23 times four, which is 92, 
is 01, 32. You know, you could do this in base 10 if you want to, just to like get the feel for it. If, if instead of using base 60 in the chart, I just did these two calculations, I would have 460 and 92, which should I, which I'd add together to become 552. But in base 60, 552 apparently, well, see, I get a problem here with 72. Don't want to type in, what do you do when you hit a 72 there? I see 0872, but it's not 0872. I mean, it kind of is, but what's even better than 0872? So here, let me write 0872. It's not that it's wrong, wrong, but it's better to say 0912 because in base 60, this number can't get bigger than 59. So if it's bigger, we have to carry the one, but the one's really a 60. So we take away 60 from the 72 and we end up adding one to the, to the eight. So 0912 is a better answer and that's equal to 552. Is it safe to say also that 72 didn't exist? That's right. I mean, in their mind, 72 was just 0112. So, so uh, well, yeah, if, if I was giving a test, uh, I would take off a point or something for 0872, just because the, um, that's not a number in their world. They don't have a, a number that's called 72. It, it, it would be like adding, you know, 57, uh, 57 plus 28 and writing seven, you know, and squeezing the seven plus eight into 15 into one thing. You know, there's no number 70, 15, although 85 is kind of the same thing. I actually, in teaching my son about carrying the one, we actually, I would have him say 70, 15 uh, as a way of getting the feel for why you might carry. I don't know if it was a great idea to, to, teach it to him that way but uh that was an idea i had without any research into child development said well 70 15 what is that you know um and it is 85 so they are the same number i so, haven't got a chance to look at the homework um but are the multiplication questions going to be all um, based on the 23 times table or is there going to be another one they're just going to be on the 23 times table okay thank you so if like on a test I could, I could give a different table and have you do it. Now, there, we are able to do other multiplications besides 23, but for that, I'm gonna show you how to use another chart. And this is the final thing for today. There is something called the table of squares. And the table of squares. Sorry, so are we, are we gonna be able to view the recording like prior to doing the homework because I'm st I feel like I need to like rewatch this to like fully understand and so like I would appreciate if I was able to see that before you know doing the homework for tonight yes this recording what happens is that it doesn't go right to my computer and zoom has it go to some kind of server that processes and then I download it and then I upload it it, it, it should I should have it ready within like an hour after the class and if you don't see it, you can email me and remind me again, but I, I'm planning to post this as quickly as it, as soon as I get the notification. Now, the table Thank of you. square. Yeah, I, I definitely want to, want to post all the recordings since they're made and all. Uh, the table of squares is simply the square of, of all the numbers. Now, when you get you know, we write 64 for eight squared, but they don't write 64. They write 0104 because that's their way of saying 64. And yes, I want to post yesterday's also. Let's take a look at the base 10 table of squares, which is also in this, uh, in this document. Okay, here it is. And I only have up to, I have up to uh, 50, but it would be better if I had up to 59, but we're not gonna need more than 50 for, for, for our purpose. So take a look, you can see this table of squares. You can see 
one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, eight squared is 64, but they would write it as 0104. Now to make things simpler for us, I'm gonna allow us to do this kind in base 10. Because the key thing for us today, and this is the big thing for today, I wanna to show you how to multiply 26 times 14 using a table of squares. And this table of squares could be the base 10 table of squares also. So let's say I don't know anything about multiplication, but I have the squares of all the numbers in base 10. I'm gonna first show you, they have two algorithms. I'm gonna show you one and have you think about why it works. Here's the process. They say, if you add the two numbers together and then take the square of that answer, which I am gonna permit us to use the base, the base 10 version of it. That's not, this, you wouldn't see the 1600 on the chart. You'd see, you'd see uh, something else. Hold on a second. Okay, the next step of the algorithm is to take 26 minus 14, which is 12, and calculate 12 squared, which we know is 144. Again, we're not going to have to do this in base 60. I'm going to let you do this, the algorithm, in base 10. And now you add these two numbers together. Can we see the page you're writing on, please? Oh, I'm very sorry. Thank you for letting me know that, that wasn't up there. Sorry about that. I'm actually going to start the calculation over. I think I'll write out. So here's what the algorithm is. You add the two numbers and square it. Then you uh, subtract the two numbers and square it, ah, and you subtract those two answers. I said before that you add them, but you subtract them. And then you divide by four. Now that's pretty mysterious, but let's just verify that that works. So that becomes 40 squared, which is 1600. And this becomes 12 squared, which is 144. And 1600 minus 144 is 1456. And you can use the calculator for this. And 1456 divided by 4 is 364. And that is the right answer. Before we analyze why this works, would you take a few minutes now? I'm just going to make up another question. The only restriction is that the sum of the two numbers has to, can't be bigger than whatever if you had this table of squares. So let's just have you. I'll just make up, you know, 30 four times 13. So would you please go through the same process? So again, we don't know how to multiply, but we know how to add, we know how to subtract, we know how to look up 
squares on tables. You can use a calculator for the squares. And somehow we also have the ability to divide by four, let's say. So would everyone take a few minutes to work on 34 times 13 using this algorithm? Okay, good. I see 442s there, and I'll go over the process. 34 times 13, you add them, it's 47, and then you square that, and you can use a calculator for it. 2209. Then you subtract 34 minus 13, which is 21. And 21 squared is 441. Then you subtract these, these two answers. I'm using a calculator for all my subtractions, actually, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. 1768. And then mysteriously, we divide 7. 1868 divided by four. Back in the day, they were really good at um, dividing things by two. So you divide by two, and then you divide by two again, and you're gonna be able to divide by four pretty easily. And, but the answer is 442. You could use a calculator for all the squaring and for the subtracting and for the dividing by four as long as you know the algorithm. Why don't I write this down as an official formula? So A times B is A plus B squared minus A minus B squared over four. the exponent's always gonna to be to the second power. So here it is as a, as a formula. Now somebody asked, well, why four? You know, is it four, is it always four? Or is it four just for these examples? Well, it's always going to be four. And this is because one of the most famous sort of identities in math, you know, a plus b squared, it's not the same thing as a squared plus b squared. What is the actual answer for a plus b squared? Can you type it in? That's right. It's got the 2AB hanging out in the middle. Maybe that's because if you're an algebra teacher, maybe you do so-called FOIL. A times A is A squared. AB, AB, that's where the 2AB comes from. B times B is B squared. Maybe you draw one of the, I think, most informative pictures in, in all of math something like that, where this is A and this is B, and this is A and that's B. 
So here we have a little a squared and a b squared and an ab, ab. Either way, a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, a minus b squared, I don't have a great picture for that, but yes, the box method. Uh, for a minus b, if you do multiplication, you end up with almost the same answer. You end up with that. Notice they, have, they both have a squared and b squared. And when you subtract those two things, I'm gonna, to be careful to not make one of the most common mistakes in all of math. So I'll put them side by side in parentheses and it becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus a squared plus 2ab. Remember this minus is here but there's a minus there also. Minus b squared and the b squares cancel out and the a squares cancel out. But what doesn't cancel out are the 2ab's because they're both positive and you get 4ab and that's the mystery of why dividing by four, why we need to divide by four as we subtract those two things to get rid of the four over there. Now that's the last thing for today. Uh, I was gonna teach another method, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. What we've seen today is base 60, uh, converting integers from base 60 to base 10, integers from base 10 to base 60, decimals from base 60 to fractions, fractions to base 60 decimals. We saw a um, using a 23 times table to multiply things by 23, and we saw a table of squares method. I want to finish up by just saying one thing. This this thing I just showed you, that the fact that a plus b squared and a minus b squared are kind of similar to each other, the Babylonians, the big thing that they knew was that a plus b squared minus four, a lot, let me write it this way. a plus b squared minus a minus b squared is equal to four ab. They knew that. That's true for any two numbers. And I could rearrange it to be a plus b squared is equal to a minus b squared plus 4ab. I could rearrange it a bunch of, of different ways. But this way, that identity is really... Uh, is it, yeah, this covers all, everything for homework tonight. I'm gonna to change something on the homework because I'm not gonna do a third method. Um, this is the major accomplishment of the Babylonians, this identity. And I'll show you a really cool picture that illustrates it. Here we have a square within a square. And if this is A and that's B, then the large square has area A plus B squared. But each of these rectangles is a A by, by B rectangle. Now, when you subtract the four rectangles, from the large square, what remains is that red square in the middle. But type into the comments, what are the dimensions of the red square in the middle? In terms of A's and B's.
it is. It's a minus b squared. And if you're having trouble seeing that, look carefully how this green line I just drew is a, and then I'll make another color. I'll make like a blue line. This little blue line is b. So that makes the height, or that makes this line, the top of the red square, a minus b. So it illustrates this perfectly because on the one hand, a plus b squared is the large square, but it could be split up into these five pieces, four of them is rectangles and one of them is a small square. This picture is quite famous, especially if I make one so that if, if a is actually equal to two, if a is twice as big as b, it looks a bit like that. And where have you seen something like that in your, in your lifetime? I'm going to bring it up on the web because it will uh, be, yeah, the way I drew it, it looks like it, it looks a little abstract, but um, if I type in windmill tile pattern, if you go into any uh, restaurant bathroom in the in the country, you will see this this tile pattern. Sorry, uh, sorry, Amber's trying to get back in. She asked me to tell you. Oh, someone's trying to get back in. Yeah. There you go. So every restaurant has as their bathroom tile pattern. Oh, the pinwheel, it's also called the windmill, the windmill uh, tile pattern. And it looks just like that. It's got the, you can actually see the a plus b squared is equal to a minus b squared plus four ab all throughout. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording now and I will post this recording. Sorry, I didn't post yesterday. I'll post both of, both of them. Um, I'm gonna update the homework, the homework assignment. There's a delta math about, um, converting to base 60 integer. The first two things we did, convert integers to base 60 and, and back. Then there's some written questions about the decimals. And I'm gonna change the homework a little because there's a third multiplication algorithm that I'm gonna not require you 